What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Cruise News Show. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise updates. Well, everybody's been raising their hand, or a lot of people. Not everybody. That's too broad. Uh, a lot of people have been raising their hands. I would like to go on a test cruise. I would like to volunteer to go on a simulated cruise. Well, do you? Do you? Look, uh, Royal Caribbean started sending out invites yesterday, and the reason that I know is because, well, we got invited. Now, we didn't get invited as Lali De Loca YouTube superstars, influencers, uh, great camera-ready people like myself. We got invited because we are travel agents. Uh, we got an email to our travel partner email saying they're looking for volunteers. And so I thought, yeah, uh, that was an email I was hoping to get. But th there are some challenges when it comes to going on these test cruises. And I thought I should do my civic duty and let you guys know 10 10 reasons why you may not want to go on a test cruise, 10 test cruise gotchas, 10 test cruise warnings, 10, it's a list of 10, okay, you figured that out so far, list of 10, hey look, I don't want to interrupt the list, so let me just invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel, if you like talking cruising, if you, if you got the smell of the sea in your nose and the salt in your blood, uh, join us. Join us in solidarity. Subscribe to the YouTube channel with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of this fun and frivolity. All right, list of 10, 10 reasons. Number 10 is going to be a shocker for many people. I doubt, I, I even doubt people will stay to number 10. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, if you make it to number 10, it'll be our little secret. But uh, number one, there are risks involved. Let me try to be serious for the first part of the list. Number one on the list. Number one, number, okay. There are risk involved. Enough risk that the cruise lines are required to tell you that in writing. They're, they're required to give you a sheet that says there are risk involved. And your response to that level of risk is you have to respond in writing, giving your understanding that you understand that there are risk involved and that you have to also give your consent now, this is uh, all of this stuff comes from the CDC framework for resuming sailing. And so I don't know at the end of the day if you're signing away any kind of rights uh, to if anything bad happens to you. That's not really laid out in the document. But anytime that somebody's telling you something's risky and you're signing a piece of paper that says, I understand that it's risky, usually if something bad goes wrong at that point, they point to that piece of paper going, look, we told them that it was going to be risky and then they did it anyways. So keep that in mind. I don't know for sure that's how it's going to play out, but uh, cruise at your own risk. Cruise at your own caution. It's like swimming in a pool with no lifeguard, okay? You know what that means when they put up the sign, no lifeguard. The, the cruise line has to tell you that it's risky. You have to say that you understand that, and you have to consent to it. Uh, that could be a gotcha. That could be a that could be a red flag for some people wanting to go on the test cruise. Number two, there is an expectation from the CDC that passengers who will be taking these test cruises will be healthy. The expectation is so strong that they are requiring that you bring a doctor's note saying that you are healthy enough to sail. They want people on board these test cruises that are at low risk of having severe complications if they contract the virus. There's a list on the CDC website of comorbidities, of people who are at risk, people they would say never get on a cruise ship. Those are the people they don't want to go on these test cruises, but I think the mechanism that they're going to use is a doctor's note. So if you are inclined to go on one of these test cruises, you may want to reach out to your healthcare professional and talk to them about what it may mean to go on one of these test sailings. Again, we got the invite. I'm inclined to go if my healthcare professional says it's okay. I don't have a healthcare professional, so I've been trying to get an appointment here in Florida. I don't know the last time that I've had a yearly physical. At that point, I didn't have any comorbidities. I didn't have high blood pressure or diabetes. And the only thing that you could really point to for me, and it's a big one, I'm probably 150, 160 pounds overweight. Uh, that's, that's a big deal. I don't know if that obesity has uh, spawned any of these comorbidities. I got to get to the doctor and find out. I'm trying to get into the doctor sometime in November in case... There are these test sailings coming up, and maybe I can get a clean bill of health. But if I don't, I won't go because the CDC, they don't want the comorbidity people on board uh, as they're testing this out. Refer to number one, it is going to be risky because it's brand new. Okay? Okay. We good? All right. Number three, you will be virus tested at the port. 
both when you get on the cruise ship, when you get off the cruise ship, who knows, they may even test you while you're on the cruise ship. And that may not be a big deal, but I know a lot of people haven't been tested. There's a nasal swab and then there's a back of the throat swab and some people don't love it. And so if you're thinking about going on a test cruise, but you've been adverse to getting tested because you're afraid how you're going to react to the testing or you don't want to be tested, well, uh, you've got to get tested to get on one of these test cruises. Honestly, you're going to have to get tested if you want to go on any cruises for a little while. But uh, yeah, if you're one of those people that just don't really want to get tested and you're content not being tested, uh, this cruise is not for you. So number three, you will get tested for the virus both at embarkation and disembarkation. And who knows, maybe during the cruise. Number four on the list, and this is a big one. This is not normal cruising. I know a lot of people are like, yes, I want to go on a free test cruise because that sounds like a free cruise to me. And, and look, technically, it is a free cruise. They're not going to charge you to go on it. They're looking for people that want to voluntarily sail. They're not charging anybody. But you are going on this cruise to help them test their protocols. L literally, you are a guinea pig. I mean, if you want to put it like that, uh, yes, the, the test protocols will be laid on top of you. And so you're going to have to jump through whatever hoops they tell you you have to jump through. You're going to have to do this at this time of day. You're going to have to do that at this time of day. There's going to be strict enforcement of the protocols. The whole deal is to have some people that they can actually be there while they're doing the test protocols. And those test protocols uh, involve testing for an outbreak. So this will not be normal cruising. If you're thinking, woohoo, free cruise, it is, but it's not normal free cruise. Woohoo. So uh, yeah, uh, you got to be ready for that if you want to go on one of these test cruises. Number five, related to all that, this is going to be a very restrictive port experience. If you're thinking, woohoo, free cruise, I'm going to the Bahamas, and I'm going to be able to wander around Nassau, well, that's that's not the case. They're also going to be testing their cruise excursion protocols, and that will most likely be a very restrictive experience. It won't result in you roaming around a foreign country. It'll most likely be only allowing you to take a ship excursion and so, uh, yeah, again, free cruise for sure, but not free cruise in the way that we know cruising to be. And if you're somebody that's like, okay, I'm jumping on this. I'm ready to get out of here. I'm going to go explore a city. This is not going to happen on this cruise. Very restrictive port experience. Number six. Now, I mentioned it earlier. They will be testing out everything, and they will be testing out what happens in the event of an outbreak. And it's very clear what they're going to do in the event of an outbreak. If you are a person that has the virus on the cruise ship, they're going to isolate you. They're going to lock you down into a cabin, and you will be locked down under quarantine. And if they do that with enough people, the whole ship's going to get locked down. So they're there could be a scenario that you're tagged as a person that has the virus, even though you don't, right? It's a simulation. You could be one of the lucky people that get to be patient zero, and they're going to lock you down, and you're going to get the lockdown patient zero experience for free. How about that? And then uh, if they go full bore on it, if they go full ship outbreak, then everybody's going to get locked down in their cabin. So uh, you might be cruising in a free interior cabin. You could get locked down. Uh, if you're lucky, you might be in a balcony, and then that way it won't be as bad when you get locked down but at some point they're going to have to simulate what happens if there's a full-on outbreak on a cruise ship and if you're one of the people on that test sailings that equates being locked down. And I know many people are not excited about being locked down on a cruise ship. So if you're one of those people that are adverse to the possibility of being locked down, I don't know that a test sailing would be for you. And number seven builds on all of these previous ones. This cruise is going to be super disruptive. Uh, I, I'm continuing to try to paint the picture for you with broad strokes that this is not going to be normal cruising and disruption should be a word of the day. Uh, okay, maybe it will be. We'll cover that at at the end. But yes, uh, this will be very disrupted in cruising. Uh, all of a sudden, you may have a, a deal where you have to go back to your cabin. It might be one of those deals where you're very content in the main atrium, learning the mambo from a, a, some entertainer on board, and the alarm sounds, and all of a sudden, you got to drop your mambo lessons and head back to your cabin. You got to leave your 
your Mai Tai there at the bar and head back to your cabin or somewhere else. So it's going to be very disruptive. There's going to be people looking at you. There's going to be people checking you out, making sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. They're going to be telling you to do this, telling you to do that. It's going to be very disruptive. So if you're if you're not into that very disruptive experience, if you're not into that somebody telling you what to do experience, I don't know that a test cruise is going to be your favorite cruise experience. Number eight on the list is your cruise just may be cut short. Uh, the protocols say that if enough people get the outbreak on the cruise ship, they got to stop what they're doing and return to their home port. Toot sweet. They got to head right on back. And so let's play that scenario out. Say you're somebody that's finagled their employer to get a week off. Now, honestly, most of the people that are going to do these test cruises probably going to be travel advisors, probably going to be people that possibly work for the companies that are doing the test cruises. So the employer might not be a big deal, but say you're one of the lucky few. Say you found one of the golden tickets. Say you're Charlie Bucket that found a dollar in a sewer and was able to buy the last golden ticket. Say you're that person, you get Grandpa Joe out of bed, and you decide you're going to go cruising down in Florida. You make the arrangements with your employer. You spend money on a plane ticket. You fly to Florida. And uh, all of a sudden on day two, the alarm sounds. There's an outbreak. We got to return and empty off the ship. Day two of day seven, you spend all that money on a plane. That's a risk that you're going to be taking. Uh, the, there's a good chance that your cruise may come to an end uh, well before you think it's going to. And it may not. Uh, you know, it may be a cruise that goes all the way, but they do have to test the procedures. And one of those procedures say that if the outbreak is big enough, the cruise ship has to return back to port. Keep that in mind if you're raising your hand to go on one of these test sailings. Number nine on the list deals with one of my least favorite cruise activities, waiting around for stuff. I hate waiting around for stuff. Well, there's going to be a lot of waiting around for stuff on these test sailings. You got to go to the port and you got to take a test. You got to wait around to see what the test result is. And then you get on the cruise ship and you got to wait around while they work out the new procedures, how to get you to your room. And you know, it, there's just going to be a lot of waiting around it. When you get back from the cruise, they're going to test you again. You got to wait around to see if you're, if you can get off the cruise ship, they're, they're going to be waiting around as they're trying to work out these protocols. I anticipate that there will be much waiting around on the cruise ship. And so if you're somebody who just doesn't like to wait around, if you don't have the patience, if you don't have the capacity to wait around, I don't know that I would jump on one of these test sailings. And number 10, this one's super kooky. No physical intimacy allowed on the cruise ship. It says very specifically there can be some making out, there can be some heavy petting, but there is no uh, allotment for planting your flag on top of Mount Everest if you get my drift. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm just, is anybody still here? That I just wanted to see if anybody was still here. That's, uh, just scratch that. Just forget the last 30 seconds. Uh, are you here? Number 10 on the list, there will be a very strict adherence to the CDC's recommended health protocols. You know them, you love them, social distancing, wearing a mask where you can't social distance, hygiene and sanitation. If you've come to hate those protocols, if you're not about them, if you don't like them at all, if you just don't want to do them, a test cruise is not for you. The CDC health protocol is going to be a big component of these test cruises. It's the CDC's document. Of course, you know they're going to have their protocols in there, keeping people safe on a cruise ship. 10 reasons why you may not want to go on a test cruise. 10 reasons that why it may not be fun. Uh, there you go. The word of the day is disruption. If you're so creatively inclined, include the word disruption in your comments. What do you think? Are you ready to be a test cruiser? Is your hand still in the air like you just don't care? Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching the show today. Please show your support by hitting the like button. This is Tony with La Lita Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.